Hello there, and welcome to another Super Mario Maker 2 episode. Uh, today's going to be a very different episode uh, from usual because uh, this time I actually had a puzzle level submitted, uh, and it wasn't just your standard puzzle level, this was a really, really challenging puzzle level. Um, here we can say now uh, that I've cleared it, um, and I've liked it because it was fun uh, and very, very difficult. Um, but uh, what I'll do is I'm going to show somewhere around here roughly the, the time you should go to if you want to see me playing through and giving hint by hint in case you want to play along uh, without getting the whole thing uh, given away. Um, so you can skip to there if you want now. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can follow along uh, and see the exact playthrough I did uh, in the victory uh, from start to finish. Um, but anyway, very fun level that I submitted, or that was submitted by uh, Shalazar on the stream this week. Um, hope you enjoy it, and uh, hope you have fun either playing it yourself or just watching how it was beat. Anyway, let's get started. We finally did it. Oh my goodness. Wow. That that was a crazy puzzle level. <sighs> For two reasons, I guess. One, because it was very difficult. And the other, just because... In term, very difficult to figure out. And the other one, just because it was very difficult to just execute properly. Um, okay, so uh, now a little bit of backstory. So... Uh, I actually have a lot of footage of different attempts trying first on stream, uh, then I tried doing it by myself, got reasonably far, played on stream again, got a few hints from others. Um, so I figured I would just show this video and then go step by step how you end up getting through the level um, instead of trying to crop all the footage together because that would be uh, a, a big mess. So but anyway, so how to beat this level? Now, there's probably a few different ways that you can go about doing it, but I'm going to go through step by step. So, uh, to start, you're going to want to uh, go to the right. Now, again, there would be different strategies for speedruns, but you want to just get the POW, shoot the POW so that the beetle doesn't do anything, because you want the switches ideally to stay off, so in terms of the blue blocks not being uh, selected, rather. So you jump up, you get one of those uh, beetle shells, and you go through the door. As soon as you go through the door, now you want to get hit the block so you can get the second POW block. Now, you have different choices in terms of where you want to lose a shelmet, because you're going to need to lose a shelmet, because you're going to need to put on the spiky shelmet instead. Uh, you could lose them to the spikes, you could lose them to the munchers. I'm not sure which one would be faster for speedruns, possibly the munchers, um, but you could choose either. And you could even choose what I did a lot of times, of just waiting for the buzzy beetle to hit you, but that is probably the slowest way, so you probably don't want to do it that way. So you lose a shelmet, now you go into this, uh, and you throw the 
uh, the POW block. So now the Buzzy Beetle is downed. Now the important piece about this is that we can't kill him, we need him to be able to get the spiky shell. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to jump up where the Buzzy Beetle is and then you're going to have to specifically drop it onto the spring. I found if I was just a little bit to the right on that uh, question mark block uh, and just dropped it, that was perfect. Uh, that made it really easy to get past. So uh, now you don't have the uh, beetle helmet anymore. So you had a few options. One, you could have earlier moved the POW block uh, up, or you could now go pick up the POW block. Either way, pick up the POW block, throw it against the wall uh, when the buzzy beetle's in the air, so that if it's in the air, the POW block won't affect it and it will survive. So that's the important piece there. So you've hit the POW block, now all the munchers are dead. So now the block is free. So now what you need to do is you need to get the be beetle, throw it, Basically, as soon as it hits a block, you want to jump and then try and land on it. Now, again, speedrun strats could be different, but the way I usually dealt with it when it was on the spring is I'd pick it up and put it at the top. That's where it was least likely for the Buzzy Beetle to wake up and then just get locked down below, uh, which would be the end because we need the beetle. <laughs> Beetle's on the top and now you just have to go pick up the spiky shell and once you have that, just put it on your head and then there's a few things that you need to break, actually three things. One of them isn't really super important, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, you have to go down and you have to break the block right below the question mark block uh, that will contain the bomb later because we need that to be free to be hit at a later point. Secondly, there's a block up in the top section where when you blow it up, uh, once you go through a door, then a launcher will appear there. Um, in truth, Part of that, I'm not entirely sure if it's actually necessary. I'd have to look back at the run to see if it was, but uh, anyway, so you have to break those two. Third one, a little bit optional. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but where you got the initial Buzzy Beetle hat, always chose the bottom one. Break that one is just going to make it that there's less things in the way for whatever reason you need to jump, which I don't think you really need to do beat the level. But anyway, less, less clutter in that very claustrophobic space is a good thing. Have all that cleared away, pick up the buzzy beetle shell, and now you should have the spiny on top, the buzzy beetle in hand, and go through the door. So the reason this is important is you need to be able to break the block below Yoshi, but you need to be able to run and throw the beetle against the question mark block, because uh, then that will activate the Yoshi there without you having to lose your spiky shell. Mit. And then uh, you hit the block and Yoshi will fall, and then uh, you get Yoshi and you go into the main section. So here's where the most complicated stuff happens, and I think there's actually a lot of different ways that you can do this section. Uh, so I'll go through my way and maybe give some examples of what else you could do, um, but this is just the way I did it. Again, the speed run, 30 seconds faster, different ways to do this. Now the red launcher that appears shot a spring, you just need to grab the spring with Yoshi and shoot the mushroom in, or shoot it into the mushroom area and get the mushroom. Theoretically that will help you in terms of damage boosting. I didn't actually, I don't think I needed it in my run. Um, it may be optional, so if you want to speed things up, maybe skip this step. I did it just because it seemed like it was necessary. <laughs> so um, I got that. Now the next bit is trying to position yourself for how you're going to need to go into the corner. So the important piece here is that there's one way is blocking your way out. So you need to have everything you need in that corner uh, already um, once you get to the end. So the pieces that you need are one, you need Yoshi of course, uh, because you need Yoshi to be able to step on the spikes. Two, you need uh, the spiky shelmet, and the spiky shelmet is important so that you can break the blocks that you will need to have free so that you can eventually get the bomb in later. So three, Yoshi needs to have, most likely, uh, or most ideally, have the uh, buzzy beetle helmet in his mouth. Um, four, well, you need to be there, obviously. And five, you need the bob bomb uh, to be on its way coming to you as well. So you can scare Yoshi, and then you can get Yoshi uh, and then you can pick up the bomb. So those are all the pieces that need to be in there. So in terms of how to set that up, um, again, lots of different ways we can choose. Uh, the way I chose was you want to have the spring as far on the left. Uh, you want Yoshi in the middle, and you want to be standing uh, close, sort of like halfway into the one way, um, holding the shell. So um, as soon as you throw the shell, uh, you have to throw it at a specific height. It might take a little bit of uh, experimentation to get that right, uh, but jump through it. The shell will go up and it will activate the bob -omb. So the bob -omb is now going to be walking around. So this is the most critical part of the level, which I found extremely difficult to execute. Um, so again, this guy can feel free to keep his record. Um, but now you have to jump on the Yoshi, which you put in the middle, 
and ideally uh, you will use Yoshi to eat the shell, um, basically just keep it in his mouth, and then do a full run or a full run into that section, uh, duck, and then jump, jump, don't jump, so that you don't get stuck in the area with a donut, and then get all the way to the end there. So if you've done it all correctly, now you should have everything that you need in that section for you. So you'll want to jump uh, and break the blocks, and when the bob bomb comes, uh, it will. Uh, scary Yoshi, you, you usually will be able to pick up the bob bomb uh, and then uh, throw it in the top area. But I did end up having an issue where, in a number of my play attempts, it didn't quite work out that way. So what you could do to make that spot possibly a little more consistent is to uh, put Yoshi in the top section, fall down, and then get the bob bomb, throw it, and then jump back on Yoshi. Um, but that's not the way it worked for me. Somehow it had just magically worked where uh, got hit, got the bob bomb, was able to throw it. Now, have Yoshi drop the shelmet. Um, you can actually spit it out. Uh, I wanted to drop it and he spat it and I almost panicked that I lost again. Uh, but it just goes right onto your head. Use that uh, to jump and then go into that little section and jump, 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 jump <laughs> until you get to the victory. So, um, anyway, that was... That was a crazy puzzle level. It was fun, frustrating, but definitely uh, a, a good experience to go through um, and definitely enjoyed it. want to give a shout out to a few people uh, who helped out with this. Uh, first, a shout out to Daryl and Shalzar. Uh, Shalzar was one who submitted on stream. They both solved it together uh, and then they submitted to the stream uh, for me to try. I definitely appreciate them sending it along. Uh, next, we have uh, Cyphus, who's the actual one who has the record now. Uh, when I joined the stream, that basically was a call for help. Uh, he gave uh, a couple of suggestions, um, of which I can't remember what they were exactly, but I remember they were helpful uh, near towards the end. Uh, so definitely a lot of thanks go to Cyphus. There was also Shadow Walker. Uh, he joined right away and started getting me thinking in different ways uh, throughout the level, so that was very helpful. And of course, Mr. Leza for joining, uh, Moyoko, uh, and for anyone else who suggested ideas. Um, but anyway. <sighs> I think that's going to be good for me for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time. See you later. Take care.